Hey, man. What's going on, man? Oh, not much. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> have you ever I heard hate of- that you've decided that's our <laughs> intro. Like, I, you, you act like we have to do that. We do. Uh, well, well we you're don't. the one. You're the one who says, "How's it going?" You could just say, "Hey, man," and then I would move on. But you say, "How's it going?" I feel you like I have to answer. Want you. me to respond to "Hey, man" with "Hey, man"? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like so, at church when the pastor says, "Hey, man," everybody else has to say, "Hey, man." Also, <laughs> is that how you end? Yeah. You go. Thank you for our daily bread. Hey, hey man. man. <laughs> I'm wondering why there's no Heyman like uh, scarecrows up in the church. I've been I figured it made sense. No, you went with okay. That took me a second to see where you were going. Yeah, he's a Heyman. Yeah, if you're listening, just <laughs> skip this one. <laughs> I'm blessing your decision by giving you the quesarito and canned Baja blast, <laughs> bro. That's how I knew this is what I was supposed to be doing. In my life. <laughs> I feel really bad when I go to Olive Garden. I make that waiter stand there for a good 15 minutes, you know, and I make them earn their tip. And every day I come out and the first thing I do is I walk over to their anthill. I get really close. And I'm like, God can't hear you here. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Things I learned last night. Have you ever heard of uh, Russ George? Russ George? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. I don't also, think so. you might know him as uh, uh, Darcy Russell George. <laughs> uh, Darcy Russell Dor- George. George. <laughs> no, don't think so. Uh, okay. So, uh, Russ George, uh, he's an environmentalist uh, who's been working in the industry for a long time. Uh, in the environment industry? Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. He's been building environments that will last a lifetime. That's Great. his slogan, his personal slogan. Um, uh, building environments that will last a lifetime of the planet. Hopefully, it's a long lifetime. <laughs> what do environment? The last part of that, he didn't put a lot of thought into. What do environmentalists do? Like, what's the office like? Yeah, they come in and they say, "How's the planet look?" And they're like, "I don't know, still pretty bad." Uh, I don't know, Darcy. <laughs> and he's like, "Russ, call me Russ." Like, I don't understand where the Russ Darcy comes Russell from. George. Why are we talking about this person? So he's an environmentalist who has um, a pretty crazy idea uh, and it's garnered a lot of attention. Uh, Okay, and and it leads to it's a really interesting. It's a it's a crazy story uh, that involves uh, um, uh, the ocean uh, native tribal lands, the SWAT team uh, and um, rust. Uh, it's rust <laughs> like yeah, like when you leave your bike out and back out back. <laughs> yeah, and, it's and you rusty. come back and your bike is rusty. Your bikes all rusty or it's, it's more like when you leave your bike inside and your parents move it out back because they didn't have enough room inside mm-hmm. um, and then you come back and it's all rusty and then your Did you come back from college says, expecting to ride your childhood bike. Yeah, my hog. Of course. <laughs> Of course I did. Oh yeah, my hog. Yeah. Well, my mongoose. Of course I did. Yeah, it was exactly a mongoose. Yeah, it's the brand. Of yeah. course. Yeah, <laughs> with the pegs, my hog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the pegs were rusted over. I was gonna they put cracked. on my trusty plastic helmet. <laughs> get out there. What did you well, say that for? Well, this is a true story. I came home and my hog was I know. rusted over. I wanted to bring it back home with me, and my wife wouldn't let me. She was like, "You can't keep that." You, can, you know, your wife's not going to put up with a rusty hog. You yeah, know, my wife's like, "No rusty hogs in this house." <laughs> so, <laughs> why did you tell this story? Oh, we were talking about rust. <laughs> oh my gosh! So speaking okay. of rust, Rusty George. Uh, so here's uh, here's the does story. he go by Rusty? No, he goes by Russ. Russ. Uh, but he should. It makes a lot more sense with what he wants to do. So Russ George, uh, he uh, started highlighting in the early 2000s this theory that he had uh, to solve the climate crisis, specifically the carbon count in the atmosphere. Okay. Um, and so this theory, uh, to to explain it, uh, we got to start with uh, uh, plankton. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. So plankton do this thing uh, where uh, they where they there's a competitive restaurant across the street. <laughs> And they're like, must get the secret formula, right? And so, 
Yep. You yep. get it. You're right on track. Spend their whole lives. Yep. Trying to get the formula. Uh, so plankton, they hang out um, in these big old pods of planktons. Um, Plankti. Planktiel. Planktions. <laughs> <laughs> they hang out in pods. Yeah, I think the what word for them plankton? is called blooms. Uh, they're like little microscopic. They're almost like bugs in the water. Um, very, very primitive life forms, um, and they feed on carbon molecules. Okay. And then when uh, they release uh, methane, uh, and it was a natural forever. Um, they had helped keep plankton pretty much single handedly had helped keep the carbon count in the atmosphere really low because what would happen is they would take the carbon, you know, whatever they do with it and then uh, <laughs> Okay. Well, there was this process that was really interesting with plankton. It, obviously, they they got rid of it and they replaced it with nothing. But when plankton would die, um, some of them would stay up near the surface and then re-release the carbon car carbon <laughs> car carbon that they hadn't digested yet. Um, but most of them would sink to the ocean floor. And there's a certain point in the ocean where if they sunk past that point, then that carbon was considered gone forever. Because they got so far that it was never going to go back up to the surface. Okay, I'm confused on what I'm confused. So you're saying, yeah. So here's the, here, here, let's do this example as if it was, it was me. Okay. If I was out in the ocean, swimming in the ocean, your deep plankton. sea swimming, deep sea swimming. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I ate a burger. Normally, okay. if I died right there, if I drowned, yeah. and I and I stayed near the surface. Then eventually I decompose and that burger would float back into the atmosphere. <laughs> okay. And be a part of the burger problem we have in the atmosphere right. today. Everybody knows burger count way too high. Um, but if I sunk too far down, uh, if that I burger's a point, lost and gone forever, that, that burger is never going back into the atmosphere. It's so the, the goal bottom is of the to ocean. sink plankton so, so that the carbon that they emit when they die close. Okay. Um, so the plankton would sink to the bottom of the ocean. They take the carbon with them and then that there's a like a, a layer of carbon at the bottom of the ocean that has been there for millions of years and this process has been ha happening over and over and over right. again. Um, so there's just tons of carbon down there that the natural order has eliminated from circulation in the atmosphere, okay. uh, which has been a great thing for the planet. Well, over the last hundred or so years uh, when industrialization happened and we figured out, oh, hey, we can get that. We started going back down there and bringing this carbon back into circulation uh, and using it for fuel and which was putting it back into the atmosphere. And so this uh, natural process that was keeping carbon out of the atmosphere, we were interrupting and pulling that carbon that had been supposed to be gone forever based by the way the natural ecosystem figured it out. Um, we we broke it and we were like, hey, put it back up there. <laughs> this is great. We can get it out and put it back up in the sky. Who cares? Uh, okay, this guy cared uh, and it's break. It's falling apart at the seams because of us um, and so Russ is like I think I can solve this problem. Um, so uh, this is contributing to the global warming. Yes. Yeah, so the carbon count is uh, a, a if you major believe that stuff <laughs> the carbon <laughs> the carbon count in the atmosphere is a major cut part of the right. the global warming issue because what what happened is uh, the more carbon in the atmosphere, the more the atmosphere warms. And so the carbon coming out of the atmosphere and getting right. stuck at the bottom of the ocean meant that it stayed cool, which created an environment that was possible. And there was for a natural life. process that was doing that for mm -hmm. millennia. Yeah, we interrupted that process yeah. by using that carbon as fuel as fuel and we but put it back up in there. We're not shooting plankton back into the ocean. Exactly. And so so, so he's like so Russ well, is just buy a bunch of plankton. Russ is where do you point. buy a plankton? Uh, there's a little kiosk in the mall in the middle of it. Uh, Plankton Palace. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, so uh, the uh, Russ's point was like when we go farm, if we're yeah. farming in the fields somewhere, uh, we take care of the earth. We take care of the soil because we realize like if we don't replace the nutrients that we're taking from the soil, then eventually it's going to dry up. Is that what happened? We did that one minute episode about that desert in Maine where the farmers didn't yeah. take care of it and it turned it into a desert and now it can't bear any fruit. Um, it's the same concept except for we're taking 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 from the ocean and we're not replenishing what we're taking from it and so we're taking and the ocean's going to rise. <laughs> I'll tell you what <laughs> Poseidon will get his revenge <laughs> Poseidon and his plankton army Poseidon's plankton platoon <laughs> and so Russ's point Russ is like we need to 
Who is Russ? Why is Russ George? I understand who Russ George is. He's an environmentalist. But I'm saying like who who is he to to say he's a merman. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He's he's a scientist. Uh, I'm so, saying like anybody because he can people just can scientists just tweet stuff and be like we should. <laughs> well, put, anybody can just tweet stuff. Well, I'm saying like, but would that count as official work where they're just like, I think we should put more plankton in the ocean, and someone's like, well, scientists are saying we should put more plankton in the ocean. Well, I think I think what a scientist would do is write a paper, get it peer reviewed, and published in a scientific journal, okay. and then go on a speaking tour, get some funding, and then start doing it. That's not how all the YouTubers I watch do stuff. <laughs> Because they're not scientists. That's not how the people I get my news from. <laughs> so, so he started campaigning this in the early two thousands. Okay, saying, "Hey, we need to, we need to fertilize the oceans. And treat he will he called we need them, to treat the oceans he, the way we treat the soil." Yeah, he said. He said we need to take care of the ocean pastures like we take care of the land pastures. Okay. Um, and he says we're doing all this damage to them and we're not replacing Pacific them. Pacific pastures was right there. Mm, Pacific, Pacific pastures. Uh, uh, he's. We need to pasteurize the Pacific pastors, please. <laughs> we need pastors to pray for this. <laughs> we need our pastors to pray for the pasteurization of the Pacific pastures. Praying. Please. It's why I started the organization. Praying pastors for the pasteurization of the Pacific pasture. <laughs> you know, it's a mouthful, <laughs> but you know, yeah. it's God's work. So it is. It is. Um. So. Uh. <laughs> so. Uh. Russ's. The way he Russ wants to pull this off right. is he says that send a SWAT team in. <laughs> you mentioned it earlier. I Kill was the trying, plankton. I was just trying to get in there. Kill the plankton. Get rid of the bottom of the ocean it's faster. Like, yeah, man. Uh, no. So what Russ Russ it proposed okay. is that um, one of the uh, uh, there's a few pieces to a healthy plankton diet. Carbon is one of them. We've got a lot of carbon right now, so yeah. obviously they're they're getting fat on carbon. Yeah. Another important piece is iron, which uh, there's a deficiency in the oceans right now of iron. The way Russ wants to pull this off is he says we'll fertilize the ocean with iron, and so we'll sprinkle some iron into the ocean, let the plankton eat that. That will give them the nutrients they need yeah. to reproduce a bunch, and then we'll have a surplus of plankton that can then die and take the carbon down to the bottom of the ocean with them when they die. And so basically, he's like, we need to. <laughs> Put enough dead plankton down that more dead plankton down than than we're than we're taking out. Okay, uh, to solve this carbon issue. Sure. Um, which is a decent theory. Uh, and so he started campaigning this, traveling around. Um, as you do. Yeah, looking for funding to go actually. Sit at Starbucks, striking conversations yeah. with strangers. Yeah. Hey, um, good question. Quick question. What do you know about plankton? Yeah. What do you think about dumping some iron in the ocean? Yeah. <laughs> I see you have an Iron Man tattoo. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> like you know, like the, the dudes that come in that have like the yeah. Iron yeah, Man, yeah, 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 yeah. like race tet, like the you know what I'm talking about. It's like the dot above. Yeah, the like M. you run really, you run in yeah. the race. Yeah, you yeah. run and bike and swim. Yeah, not and the Superman. That's what I was trying to not say. The superhero. Yeah, I the thought in your brain you were like, wow, heroes. in 2000, people had Iron Man tattoos, huh? No, uh, they did too. But did they? Yeah, I don't know if Iron Man the race was out in 2000 either. I think that was a 2010s thing. No. Yeah. No. Look it up. Iron Man, like the race, like the Iron Man races. Yeah. Oh, whoa. <laughs> 1978. You were, yeah, you were way really off. wrong, dude. I was way off. Wow. I, I, you, I didn't hear about you it said it so confident too. I think it was a 2010s thing. I, really I don't know, it. dude. I didn't hear about it until then, so it didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real until I hear about it. Uh, so <laughs> that's fair. So he was going around doing all these speeches um, and making these plans to go try this. Sure. Um, and then he started selling uh, what he did. It was kind of clever. He started selling carbon credits uh, to private individuals. And so, do you know what carbon credits are? No. So carbon credits are things that nations can purchase. Um, it's an environmental thing. Basically, uh, nations can purchase X amount of carbon credits to make an impact in the carbon crisis by funding some other nation to make an impact in their nation. And the idea for it is for nations who do not have the means to do it themselves or do not have the physical space or resources within their country to actually make an impact. So these are things like planting trees um, or, okay. or lowering emissions. Like if a nation doesn't have the ability themselves to do those things, they can buy carbon credits to be like, hey, we're, we're 
approaching that carbon neutrality and we're working towards it. And so we get credit for it because we're funding it, but we can't do it ourselves within our board. What is the credit? Like what I want to, I want people to know that we did this. Essentially it's, it's, it's like if so you people can't be like, well, Sweden's not doing anything and Sweden's like, well, hold on. <laughs> Look at our carbon credits or whatever a Swedish accent sounds like. Right? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. It's and like they're like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't actually want to do anything, <laughs> but I want the credit for it. It's like in high school uh, when my youth group, we uh, we all banded together and we gave uh, I want to say it was six thousand dollars to speed the light and they gave us this little silver plaque to say we gave six thousand dollars to speed the light. Yeah, but really Patrick's parents gave five grand <laughs> and <laughs> you and, and the editor. and we got this plaque that proved how good we were as people, I guess. Yeah, uh, because it had a dollar on it. And it's the same thing. Carbon credits just say how much money you spent on planting trees and stuff in some other country. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. We love our listeners a lot. And one way that you can let us know you're here uh, is by leaving a podcast review. Maybe that's a five star thing in the Apple podcast app. Maybe you listen on Spotify or if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment. We do read all the comments and reviews. We just love knowing what you think about this show. Uh, also, if you haven't yet, go check out some of our other episodes. My current favorite is the identical strangers episode. It's three brothers or triplets who were separated at birth un unbeknownst to them or their parents as part of a really weird uh, experiment. So uh, there's a lot of really fun stuff we talked about in that episode, uh, but thank you for checking this out. Now back to this one. But what he did is he started selling these carbon carbon credits to private individuals um, for five, 10, 15 bucks. And so you could buy a carbon credit and know, oh, hey, this is going towards making more plankton to solve this carbon crisis. And okay. so if you so it, I mean it was essentially donating to the cause, but since he wasn't a 5013 C, he couldn't take donors and so he started ha allowing people to purchase these carbon credits so that way he could then fund this mission. Okay. Um as a scientist. Uh and so he had uh a couple decent sized backers and then he met uh this native population uh, called the uh, man. I'm going to butcher this. Uh, the Haida you, tribe. You butchered the word butcher. <laughs> what did I You're say? Like, I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Haida tribe. Um, okay. Uh, How do you which, spell it? H A I D A, which okay. is a, a tribe in uh, uh, British Columbia. Okay. Um, and uh, partnered with them. Partnered with them uh, to go do this. So they started studying the impact of what would happen if they did it and made sure it was safe to do it. And then one day they sailed out into the ocean and they sprinkled three tons of iron into the ocean okay. uh, and they just kind of drove around over and I should say one day it was over the course of a couple of weeks. They went around with little salt shakers <laughs> and they were just like <laughs> I like the cracked pepper better where they're just <laughs> the guys like say when <laughs> yeah, the cheese grater at Olive Garden. They're standing over and they're it's just a boat line. I do them. feel I feel really bad when I go to Olive Garden. And I make that waiter stand there for a good 15 minutes, you know, I, and I make them earn their tip, <laughs> you know, and they just sit there and they are oof. I'm going to have to get a reload. Yeah, dude. I saw one Olive Garden uh, employee like a, a yeah. server there uh, had to buy special shirts, you know, because one arm jack. <laughs> All right. Other arm so small, <laughs> you know, and I was like, <laughs> Dude, oh. switch hands sometimes, you know. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to always. You don't got to do that. Twist that same hand. Uh, yeah, so they they went around. They they peppered the ocean with iron. Sure. Um, uh, and then they came back and they were excited about it, wait, ready and waiting to collect dat data. And they dropped a bunch of probes down there to see um, to see if it worked. To see if like all the plankton started coming and what they were doing with the carbon um, and things like that. And while they were collecting this data, uh, all of a sudden one day. Uh, the Canadian SWAT team just busted into their lab and destroyed all their machines, destroyed all their hard drives, uh, and arrested a few of them. Uh, for what? For trying to save the planet, uh, because the oil barons don't want them. Is this real? To do no, this is a real story. This is your this is your conspiracy theory of mine talking right now. No, uh, the this oil is, barons. This is where <laughs> this is where uh, the story needs to pivot. Um, <laughs> here's what's interesting. So I watched this video uh, in prep for this. I watched an animated <laughs> clip. I watched this video 
and here's the deal. This wasn't the SWAT team. These were aliens. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. No. So I watched this video. It was a, it came out only a couple of days ago and it's this video is an interview with Russ George telling this story about how he came up with this idea uh, and about um, them doing these experiments. What and year then, was all this early 2000s still? Yeah, this was probably 2010 when this happened. Okay. Um, and and then he talked about how the Canadian SWAT team he said biggest SWAT operation in Canadian history and, and they came and they shut him down um, and he said he th- he thinks it's because there's some corporation that had an interest in this and um, as happens often. What does the Canadian SWAT in- team do? The Mounties, <laughs> yeah, the, the Mounties, Mounties came. Yeah, they kicked the door on down their, with the horses on their meese, <laughs> right? And they're riding their they're moosing right over to the uh, the the where were they at the British Columbia right? Yeah, and they kick down the door. They don't kick down the door. They knock. They knock. And they go. Sorry about this. Um, so, sorry. And they go. You can't Can we do throw this. A flashbang in you here, can't please? do this anymore. <laughs> and um, if you keep doing it, uh, bad things are going to happen. Yeah. Hand us your hard drive. We need to destroy them. <laughs> we need to throw those in the ocean with the iron you threw out there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we'd really appreciate it if you stopped. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it, what he said was that there there must be some corporation that has a vested interest in this and, that doesn't want us doing what we're doing, and so they got the government to shut us. Yeah, down. of course. That's conspiracy one hundred and one, though. Yeah, and so I watched this video and I was like, oh, this is an interesting story. I want to know more about this. Sure. Um, what corporation do you think is behind it? I don't know. McDonald's. <laughs> For some reason, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> For some reason, so uh, so uh, so then I went back on and did some more research on the story. Obviously, so Russ George, his occupation on Wikipedia is restorer of ecosystems. Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, he's started uh, dozens of businesses. Um, uh, let's take a look at a couple of the more famous ones that he started. Uh, Klimafa, uh is one of them. Uh, this is a company uh, that is uh, uh, solving the carbon crisis by planting trees. Worldwide. Okay. Um, one thing that uh, Klimafa did and was famous for doing was selling carbon credits to people uh, to fund the planting of trees. So you could buy a carbon credit and that would, they would plant a tree somewhere in your honor sure. because you purchased a carbon credit. Is this like where you would like you didn't buy somebody a birthday gift? So you're like, I got you a star. <laughs> you know, I hate that. I got I hate, you a tree. You know how many people own that star? All right, first of all. <laughs> and then like, I, I, am I dumb for that anyway? Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Like you're, if my girlfriend bought my cat a star, that's a real thing that I yeah. have to say in yeah. the world. You know? Yeah, but your girlfriend didn't buy your cat a star. She bought a plaque that said you own this star. Yeah, it was, well, it's not even a plaque. It's a piece of paper. <laughs> all right, that she printed out at Office Depot. <laughs> all right, she's an online. Is it credit. stock at least? Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh yeah, she didn't. No, I mean, dude. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to talk bad about her. I'm not saying that I'm I'm taking the gift for granted. All right, <laughs> you know, she gave me a good card stock. You know, my cat owns that star. So, <laughs> so Klimafa, you could pay to buy this carbon credit, and then they would plant, they would a, plant tree a tree in your honor, and right? Like, yeah, and you'd be like, you're saving. Can the they world. do the thing where when you die, you turn into a tree? You heard that? No, they didn't do that. But you've heard of that. I've heard of that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, what do you What do you want to happen to you when you die? Do you know? Like, do you want to be? I don't it. think I've I ever asked you this. I'm. I'm. Do you have an idea of what I want to happen to you when you die? <laughs> 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 I figured we just throw you over a boat <laughs> in the ocean, see what happens. I, I haven't thought about it a lot. Have you thought about it? Um. I. You know. I mean, I just figured I'd just get buried. I mean, I guess I don't know. I do. figured I'd figure that out when I was closer to death. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Speaking of death, uh, <laughs> <laughs> check out our Patreon. <laughs> I, thought, you know, I thought you were going to pivot. <laughs> Speaking of death, no, we have a discord. We've been working on this uh, landscaping project. I don't I, like where I this is going. Bree the other day. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Please start by saying you didn't find a body in your yard. God, I wish. Uh, <laughs> no, Speaking I realized death, there was a landscape in my yard lately. <laughs> we found some bones. Oh yeah, I guess the uh, neighbors see you digging a hole in their backyard. Is that where you're going? No, what I was saying was we started this like first week of March. We've been doing this for like four months straight. Yeah, and I just realized something 
as like I was digging up my like 19th ant hill of this season um, uh, cause we're, we're put in, we've put in probably seven like flower beds. It's so much yeah. work digging and moving and pulling stuff. Um, I put in a, a pool where I live. No, you didn't. It hasn't yeah. been open for in my uh, in my apartment complex. They haven't opened their pool, so I dug one <laughs> <laughs> and uh, dug a hole. Put in a tarp. Living room. <laughs> yep, filled it up. <laughs> dug it in my living room. I dug into the ground in my living room. So you've been digging flower things. Yeah, so we've been digging it, and I just I realized something this weekend. Yeah, I was like I was like <laughs> I told this to my wife, and she's like you're an insane person uh, for thinking like this. But I was like I was like here's the thing. I was like there is an entire generation of bugs who all they've known is upheaval. All they've known is us just destroying their lands and then they migrate to the next plot of dirt over and then we come and we destroy their land and honestly because bugs live what six to eight weeks. So this has been two generations. There is now a you generation killed that their has grand, <laughs> great 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 parents. <laughs> In them, there's a generation who has had children, and their children have had children, and all they've ever seen is just bloodshed and destruction, and the earth just ripping apart around them. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, I, I don't know, it's just kind of fascinating. And every night they cry <laughs> out, "God, when will you smite our enemies?" <laughs> and every day I just, and every day I, and every day I come out, and the first thing I do is I walk over to their ant hill, and I get really close, and I'm like. God can't hear you here. Jeez. <laughs> I do think it's evil when people pour the uh, you seen the like that hot. Yeah, the boiling sil- water. No, not water, but like the silver. Oh God, down like an mercury. Hill. Yeah, yikes. I don't down know if that's legal. Hill. Isn't that like bad for the environment? No, 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 no. no. What am I talking about? You know what I'm talking about where it like hardens oh, and then you God. dig that up and now you've got the no. Yeah, we're just we're just putting in bushes, but even still it's like uh, they had this whole ecosystem in place because there was old plants there that we ripped out and yeah, we dug out all the mulch. We're putting in rocks and so it's like, weird that sometimes we feel bad for bugs and then other times we don't like I have no problem killing wasps. I I spray them I, and then I watch as they like this was the weirdest experience like a little a little caterpillar. I'm like, oh, you poor little baby. I felt I felt genuinely bad for a group of bees in the middle of this project because I don't know if it, this is normal, but there was like a bunch of storms and I think they put a hive. We dug a hole and we hadn't filled it yet and I think they dug into that hole and put a hive in that hole because we just kept seeing them fly in and out of this opening on the side of the hole. Yeah, um, and it honestly didn't bother me. I was just working around them and letting them do their thing, but Bree about Bree was like, I can't work like this because she she's like, I don't know if I'm allergic and I was like, well, I we can find out pretty easy. Yeah, what is she <laughs> does that EpiPen. mean? I don't know if I'm allergic. She's never been stung by a bee before, so she doesn't know I've been stung. Why a is that a fear? Um, but well, she's a she's allergic to a few other things like pretty allergic to a few other things, so I mean oh. she could be yeah, but That's, we I have don't an EpiPen. life like that. I we have like, an oh, EpiPen, so know. like I'm like we could just get you stung and find out. Um, get you stung, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, so long story short, she was like, I can't be around this. So eventually I just plugged the hole. I just threw some dirt and it plugged that hole and I was like, okay, we're fine. They can't get out. Um, well, then all the bees that weren't in there started panicking because I guess the queen must have been trapped in there oh. and I kid you not. This was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. These bees came back to that hole where I plugged it with dirt and they landed and with their little bee hands were digging trying to dig through that yeah. with their tiny little the little bee little, hands. little bee hands and it was the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life like all these bees frantically trying to dig through this dirt to get their queen out and I was just like and I was just thought I don't have that kind of passion for anything <laughs> <laughs> you know it was the saddest thing to watch these creatures be so passionate about a directive and I was like, wow, I have no motivation to do about anything like anything this. that much. <laughs> That's what was the saddest part. I told Bri, I was like, I feel like we need to save him. And she was like, well, we're going to have to like, we're going to put something in that hole. Eventually we're going to plant a bush in there eventually. And so we just let them dig for a while until eventually they gave up. They came back for weeks trying to dig in there. Uh, it was pretty sad, but th- there's a whole generation of bugs. That's all they've ever known in my property. Two generations. Mm-hmm. My father and think. my father's father. Yeah, and my father's father before him. Yeah. The world is a dangerous. Maybe place we should ask those bees what they, what they want to happen to you after you die. 
I was asking them that. <laughs> They're gonna want me to get buried alive. Like, We've got some <laughs> ideas. You think bees are vengeful? Oh, they're anyway. so vengeful. Anyways, so anyway, that was a weird tangent. I don't know how we got there. <laughs> I don't know how we get back either. So Russ, uh, he's got this business called Klimafa. Yeah, uh, and they've been selling these carbon credits, uh, and he's famous before. Uh, well, he got famous, uh, I think, in 2007, for selling thousands of these carbon credits to the Vatican, um, because oh. the Vatican was like, we want to be carbon neutral. And probably the easiest way we know how to do this is to plant a forest in the Vatican. Um, okay. And so he was like, "Hey, I do that. Um, you want to buy thousands of carbon carbon credits, and we'll plant the Vatican forest." And they were like, "Yeah." And so they did that, and there's like this press <laughs> thing. Yeah. <laughs> so they did that. There's this big press thing of like him handing them the carbon credit. All of his business plaque. cards from now on say, uh, "I Vatican." <laughs> you know. And the other guy's Vatican. I Vatican. I Vatican. Hey, thanks again for listening to this episode. If you like our show, make sure you follow us on social at Tillin Podcast or subscribe anywhere where you're listening to right now, whether that's YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, whatever it is. And if you want more, uh, we do have a Patreon you can support us on. Uh, in there, you get all sorts of perks like ad free episodes, early access to our content, and even a Discord with our hosts and producers. Uh, so we'd love for you to check that out. All you got to do is text Tillin to 66866. That's Tillin to 66866. But thanks again for checking us out. Uh, and so, uh, gave them this, these carbon credits. Um, here's the thing forest never got planted uh, Uh-oh. and that's uh, what the kids call fraud <laughs> and uh, a rep from the Vatican. I watched an interview a rep from the Vatican was like, uh, yeah, I guess we got scammed there. Didn't we <laughs> <laughs> and the field where there's supposed to be this Vatican forest is literally still just a field. Wait, when was this? So that's why the Canadians SWAT teamed them. Yeah, uh, so this guy, he's got a history of having these businesses, these environmental businesses where he sells these carbon credits to people and does nothing with them. Um, uh, so it's just a scam. Well, here's the thing though. He did do this rust into the ocean thing. No, well, you don't know that Kicked though. by the ocean rust like, by the ocean. Yeah, there's video of it. He took video and he really yeah, it. but it's like what are they putting in there? Iron <laughs> this paprika. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> You know who? Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, an environmentalist, anybody can pretend to be one. Well, here's the thing: people started looking back at his credentials. He dropped out his sophomore year of college. He has no degree. Um, his his one of his previous businesses. Am I like a genius, or like, am I like? <laughs> here's the thing: I think a lot of people are dumb. You know, it does that. I just. Yeah, you're telling me the story, and I immediately as soon as you talk about carbon credits, I go, "That's first of all made up. It's a real thing. That's a I real mean, thing governments yeah, do. That's I know, I know it's what governments do. But as soon as he's selling it to private people, you know, as soon as he's selling it to the guy in Starbucks with an Iron Man tattoo, I go, "This is this is a this scam, is scammy." Yeah. Um, so he had a he had a company. You called can buy one on our website. <laughs> yeah. Dylan. dot com slash carbon credit. He had a company called. Uh, uh, um, Len leaner Lenner Lenner leaner. Okay. Um, it was called low energy nuclear reactions um, and basically they look like little dishwasher units that were nuclear power units and they yeah. do small made up. nuclear reactions. Made up, dude. You can have a company for anything dude <laughs> made up. They would do small nuclear. It was a nuclear bomb. It was supposed to be a small nuclear bomb that was going to give you energy and power your home. I think they were actually just heaters. They're space heaters, is what he advertised them as. And he was like, "Yeah, you could buy this." And yeah. he's like, "It's space the most heater. efficient space yeah. heater." If you get too close, it will burn your skin. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you get too close, your legs going to swell up real big. Yeah, don't worry um, about that. It's just yeah, a side effect. Yeah, sleep it off. It'll shrink. <laughs> uh, and then uh, uh, the. The most peculiar thing in the scenario is uh, every time someone was asking for his research on what was going on with these plankton and how he knew that this stuff was going to work, um, he was like, uh, he was like, oh, it's it's very secret. It's like early, like I can't <laughs> share that with you. And so yeah, made up. So like they want to share, like he wouldn't share anything. Sure. Um, and so a lot of scientists started, an actual environmentalist started like sounding some alarm bells, and we're like, don't let this sure. guy do this. Like, <laughs> like. 
we do know that iron would explode the plankton population doing this. And, so, and we do know that what would happen is they would consume a lot of carbon and they would take it with them to the bottom. We of the do ocean. know it would work. Don't do like, it. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. What we don't know is what would happen when the we rest know of the ocean. It would work. We don't trust that guy. <laughs> they were like, what we don't know what happened is when the rest of the ocean gets their hands on that iron. Um, there's other life in the ocean and yeah. we don't know what's going to what's going to do to the rest of the ecosystem. Sure. We also are pretty sure that flooding an ecosystem with one type of life is usually bad for it. Um, and so he's like, we're going to overwhelm the population with plankton. That's usually going to harm the rest of the population in the right. ocean. And so all the environmentalists were like, we can't do this. This is a bad idea. Um, and so he tried to do it in the Galapagos Islands. It would work, but it's a bad idea. It, it, it would work, but McDonald's told me to say <laughs> it's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> this counter idea is brought to you by Pizza, pizza. Hut. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody out plankton's the hut. Okay, uh, put a pin in that. That is a movie idea. We need to create a movie where it's a future reality where scientists are sponsored by corporations. Yeah. Wait, that's real. That's actually happening right now. They just don't say it, but we'll have them say it. We'll have them do yeah, that. Dude, what do you think that every <laughs> dietary thing is? Is like that the uh, yeah, that's a hundred percent real. Yeah, Coca Cola is paying scientists so, to not tell you that the the sugar content in those sodas is going to definitely. Yeah, into you with your feet not on your body anymore. So we don't even have to pretend. We'll just we'll just have them do their speech. What a cool sci-fi story! <laughs> we'll Wouldn't that them. be a crazy <laughs> science fiction story? We'll have them do their big I don't know TED talk and yeah. be like, Wouldn't that be crazy if Coca Cola, Coca Cola, <laughs> an evil corporation was just full of Coca Cola is not evil. And we good. support Coca Cola. They love Honestly, the planet and humans. This podcast and all is of us. brought to you by pure and holy Coca Cola. <laughs> all hail the Coca Cola. All hail Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he tried to do it in the Galapagos. And Are you trying to suggest Coca Cola is the watcher? Because that's hilarious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I'm one of them. Maybe I'm all of them. <laughs> Every time you crack open a cold one at the game, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, no. Uh, uh, so he tried to do this at Galapagos, and the Galapagos was like, "No, you're not doing that here. You're, in fact, you're not allowed." Galapagos. Near here. Like, first of all, we sound made up. All right. <laughs> Someone asked us for our name and we just made some sounds. <laughs> just like, I the Galapagos. <laughs> hey, it sounds made up, doesn't it? Hey man, I'm, uh, I'm Tim. What's your name? Uh, uh, Galapagos. Uh, here's the thing. All words are made up. I understand that, right? But that one specifically <laughs> sounds pretty far fetched. <laughs> That one just sounds like some noises, man. So, anyway, and they were like, please don't do that here. The Galapagos was like, and yeah. he was like, I'm gonna. <laughs> And they they were like you can't come within 100 feet of us. Yeah, uh, and so he got a restraining order from the entire Galapagos Islands and the waters around them. Galapagos then- that <laughs> way, bro. Like, you are not allowed here. Uh, and so so then he tried to do it in Bermuda, and Bermuda was also like no. Uh, yeah. So then what he did, and this is where the story gets sad, is he went to this Haida tribe, or oh. Haida, Haida tribe. I'm not sure, uh, but he went to this tribe, and this tribe. Oh, the story with them is they have always been like most tribal people very conscious of the environment right. um, and very proud to be that and way he exploited that that on top of their largest industry in that tribe for as long as it had been around is was salmon fishing. Um, the majority of the people in that land worked either as a fisherman or in an industry adjacent to salmon fishing, fishing. got it um, and uh, the way that works is I don't know how much you know about salmon. Um, I know a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they they have the rivers right and the salmon swim in them. Right. And then at the end of the season, they, they leave. They yeah. leave up the river, and then yeah. no one knows where they go. And well, then, I know. <laughs> and then uh, the next season, they come back, and everyone's yeah. like, "Welcome back." It's like they make rib. We're gonna eat you. <laughs> <laughs> it goes up the river. Nobody knows where it goes. All right, and then all of a sudden, it's back. The <laughs> make rib is back. You know, it catches everyone by surprise. Uh, so the fish, they they leave, they come back. Well, right. one season, they just never came back. And to this day, scientists have no idea why. Um, okay, there's a lot of guesses, but they're not. They don't know. 
Sure. Russ showed up and he was like, guys, it's the plankton. Um, and so at this point when he shows up, uh, the unemployment rate in the tribe had reached 70% um, yeah. because all the jobs, there was no salmon. There's no industry. There's no salmon. There's no industry. There's not. Yeah, there's nothing to do. And he came back saying, hey, like I know how to fix this. I know what the problem was. Oh. We can go one create jobs Two, um, bring the salmon, bring back. the salmon back and create long term jobs. And so he creates this. Uh, I think it was called the Haida Salmon Corporation. What do salmon eat plankton? I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this episode you. isn't about salmon. Couldn't tell you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> McRibs do though. <laughs> yeah, McRibs eat plankton. <laughs> It's <laughs> so actually really similar because that was an you eating worked. McRib. When was the last time you ate a McRib? I don't know if I ever ate a McRib. When was the last time you had McDonald's? Uh, it's been a while. Yeah. When was the last time you ate McDonald's? Uh, I ate McDonald's that night that we went putt putting. <clears throat> yeah, that was because it was the only thing open. Yeah, I, I probably went a few months ago. I do like their nuggets. I will say I used to do their double Cheeseburger meal because you yeah. had two double cheeseburgers, right. a fry and a drink. It was like Wonderful. four bucks. That was our tour meals. All I time. went and I grabbed that the other day and it was nine dollars. Yeah, not worth it. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, anyways, um, remember when we used to go <laughs> when they had the twenty dollar deal for like five bucks or the twenty nuggets? Twenty nuggets for five for bucks. Five bucks, and we would go and we'd get like forty nuggets and a few of those mott sticks when they had mozzarella sticks for a little oh, while. Yeah. Gosh, those mott sticks were so good. Yeah, dude. Oh my god. We gosh. remember that the year that we started touring was the year that Taco Bell released the quesarito mm. and oh. it was just like you that, know those times Baja in life. Blast. Baja Blast came out. That Baja Blast came out. Taco Baja Bell. Blast. Yep. Oh, and uh, it was like those times where where God says this is what you're supposed to be doing, you know, and it was like wow, dude. Baja I'm, Blast in canned form. I'm blessing your decision by giving you the quesarito and canned Baja Blast. <laughs> Bro, that's how I knew this is what I was supposed to be doing in my life. Yeah, so anyway. Um, so he's like, hey, listen, this will bring the salmon back. Yeah, and so he gets a bunch of these people to come work as his researchers. Right. They're not researchers. No. Half of them, like, half of them genuinely haven't really ever heard of science. Um, because all they've done is salmon is salmon. Yeah, right. all they've done is salmon fishing. They they went to a very rudimentary school and then as long as yeah. quick as soon as they were old enough to fish, they went and started fishing uh, and that was their life. Uh, and so uh, so he conned them. He yeah, he tricked these people. So into they, it. What, what was the aftermath of him putting all the iron in there? That's what's very interesting. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they estimated this group estimated and by this group. I mean Russ George estimated yeah. uh, that uh, this was going to bring pink salmon back to the area bring about 50 million pink salmon back into okay the area. Um, well, it actually turned into a catch a season catch. So the whole season catch of 224 million pink salmon. So it Five x the return of. So they did come back. Yeah. So he was right. Yeah. Do you think he did it on purpose? <laughs> he kidnapped the salmon. <laughs> Do you? you oh he wait, wait, no, that's not. That's salmon. not at all what I was saying. <laughs> I was, I was saying, did he just lie to them and be like, this is gonna bring the salmon back? And then when it did, he was like, Ooh, he was like, Whoa. like he didn't know it was gonna happen. You're saying. That when the salmon went up the river, he was like, "I got him," and he just net he net caught all the salmon, 50 million and salmon. was like, "You're saying one at a time as well. You're doing as if he's got a little like a butterfly net that he's catching one salmon at a time, 50 million of them, huh?" That's what you're saying. And then he breeded them for six years. I was years. saying he went down there and just lied, talked out of his butt, and then got lucky. And then just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're saying <laughs> I think that that's less likely. <laughs> you think it's less likely. <laughs> so it brought in five x the amount of, of salmon. I guess yeah. they do eat plankton then. Uh, apparently, I don't know what happened. Um, I'm not sure how this how this turned out the way it turned out, uh, but it worked pretty well. And now the people think that this guy's a genius. Um, well, yeah, <laughs> uh, but 
here's the peculiar thing about the story is this man has clearly been in a situation where time and time again, he's lied to a lot of people and made a lot of money doing it. Sure. Uh, somehow. He's still this is like if you cry wolf your whole life and then one time a pack of wolves show up <laughs> and you're like, that's what I knew was going to happen. I said it was going to happen. It's like it's six a wolves. Thing. It's a good thing you guys got your wolf credits. Good thing you guys are <laughs> trained in wolvery. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, what's peculiar about the story is he's clearly a con man, sure, um, but he's still out here doing this and he's not getting in trouble for it um, and he's open about it. And what's even more peculiar is this YouTube video I watched. This wasn't like some YouTuber made this YouTube video. Uh, this was like a a, a, a production. Um, yeah, but it worked though. He he brought the salmon back. <laughs> I'm kind of serious. Like I don't understand. Well, that wasn't the goal. The goal wasn't the salmon. The, yeah, the salmon was what he. What did they discover about the plankton doing, though? Did they did they, did they nothing? Nothing happened with the plankton. Yeah, all that no iron data. they just dumped. There's in. no data about what happened with the plankton. So they didn't even research the plankton. He just dumped a bunch of iron, and then all of yeah. a sudden, there's five x the number of salmon. Yeah, yeah, and so it's most likely unrelated. Um, okay, <laughs> unless he kidnapped them. <laughs> it's most likely unrelated. But here's the thing: he's out here still filming these videos, trying to act like there's some big conspiracy about oh. his the SWAT team and everything. Um, to stop him to stop him when and most environments are, are just like hey if you introduce that much of one element yeah. into the ocean that's going to create that's, that's going to create other problems. Yeah, it sure will it do the thing you say it's going to do maybe yeah, um, but there's other things that are going to happen, like but this we is can't it. just flood the Galapagos with salmon. Yeah, <laughs> All right. I love the Galapagos before the 224 million salmon showed up. <laughs> Dude, we were on our honeymoon in the Galapagos Islands, right? <laughs> wonderful. Just sprawled out on the beach. Just a wonderful week. And then all of a sudden, Sam. <laughs> One morning we woke up, we opened up the curtains in our in our room, and it's just pink as far as One the day eye could see. I turned the shower on, salmon <laughs> coming out of the shower. You know how hard it is to brush your teeth in salmon? <laughs> It's almost impossible. <laughs> almost, almost impossible. I still did it. Everything smelled so bad. <laughs> um, and they're like, there's five <laughs> times as many salmon as there usually are here. Sorry, guys. Hey, hey here's the thing that hey, here's the point. Here's my point. The <laughs> point I'm making. I, there's a lesson yeah. in all of this. Great. <laughs> and the lesson is. I watched this video and after watching this video, I was convinced that this guy was a scientist who the Canadian man was after and trying to shut down um, because they had their dirty pockets and sure. he was trying to save the planet. Uh, but upon doing just a little bit of research, I found out oh, this is a con man. Okay, um, and the point is uh, don't listen to the people you see on YouTube. If you hear a story on YouTube. That means if you listen to this on the podcast app, you can believe you everything can believe we say. It. Because if you're you can't watching make a podcast on YouTube, without a degree. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, discredit. Yeah, I did not believe it. No, just like double check it. Like uh, uh, I don't know. It's 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 easy and a lot of people believe what they hear on social media and on YouTube videos. Um, and especially this YouTube video. This YouTube video was it seemed like a very reputable news source the way they sure edited it and made it look um, and at the end of it, I was convinced, um, but it was a lie. Um, so um, yeah, there's that McRib's coming back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, the only way to bring a McRib back is to sprinkle a bunch of iron <laughs> on every McDonald's in your every city. McDonald's <laughs> drive through <laughs> just sir. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm bringing back the bring back the McRib <laughs> fivefold. <laughs> like what? There's gonna be more McRibs. What is McDonald's is like, the rest room I was like guys, people got it. We're we're giving McRibs away. There's too many McRibs. <laughs> We've got boxes and boxes and boxes of McRibs. We're 240 million McRibs and are at the Chestnut location. <laughs> what are we to do with all these? Anyways, this podcast was brought to you by the McRib at McDonald's. Fiddle off. Fiddle them off. (laughs) 
Hey, if you like this episode, we've got more of them you can watch here or just some highlights, some of our favorite parts from episodes before. Please make sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future episodes and leave a comment and let us know how we're doing. So thank you for being a part of this community. We'll see you again on the next episode of Things I Learn on a Site.